All right, Ben Mang, welcome to the rundown. It is uh, Thursday. It is October 25th. I'm thrown off that it's not Wednesday. It's Thursday. But this is the rundown. We're in Chicago, uh, presented by Foling. Uh, Foling is a rowdy mashup of football and bowling. Uh, first team to knock down all 10 of their opponents' pins wins. Uh, it was born at the Indy 500 in 2001. Foling is wildly popular in the Midwest, where it all started. And it's taken the nation by storm. It's anyone's game. Tight spiral, granny roll, underhand. You don't need a quarterback to win. Uh, bonks win the game in just one throw, but you got to give the other team one last chance before you claim victory. If any of the players first throw the game with all 10 pins are still standing, the red pin is knocked off the board, and that's a bonk. Easily stored within latching boards, the set comes with everything you need, 20 weighted pins, two board, two boards, one football pump, and uh, endless fun. So upgrade your tailgate, use Barstool 20 for 20% off plus free shipping on a Foling set at playfoling.com. That's playfoling.com. It's spelled F-O-W-L-I-N-G though. So playfoling.com, go get a set. Uh, I mean, we've done the, drafts on these types of games. So we have. They uh, should make White Sox save the face of this. They got a pin called Bonk. It's just about <laughs> throwing the ball as hard as you can at a target. Like this is this is the White Sox Dave game yard game. They are trying to make money, correct? It truly is. Yeah, they should put your face on it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm looking at this the pictures here. I, I feel checks. like you have a huge advantage if you can drop it in a bucket as opposed to like coming in with the line. If you can like splash one in. And Dave, do you have that touch? I know you have a big arm, but do you have the touch? That's always. I was never a command guy, so that could be an issue. Ed? I mean, you can hit you can hit a set of bowling pins though. Yeah, I'd come close. Yeah, but it, like you don't. I think you can. You you just gotta go velocity. You just gotta smash. <laughs> yeah, that's, them. What, that's, that's what I would do. Don't miles don't change a thing about yourself. Uh, first topic here: Patrick Beverly got traded to the Lakers. Uh, it's a tumultuous thing here. You know, yeah, Le- LeBron. He's just talking shit about them. And uh, I don't know. You guys know we're not the biggest basketball guys. So if you guys don't mind, I think I want to bypass this topic with a different first topic. Uh, with I the would guy. love to bypass it. Okay. All right. We. Are, I mean, also, we're all Pat Beverly guys. He's a Chicago guy. Yep. He's a tough guy. Like, he's, he's just a man. He's from Aurora, I think. He's from my neck of the woods. No, he went to Marshall, mm-hmm. I think it was. Um, but regardless, uh, the guy in a guy from Italy got – it's not. It's serious. I'm not laughing because this is an all-time bad beat. This guy got COVID. He got monkeypox and HIV all in one – Roundup. What's the symptom that put him over the top to go get tested? I think the picture that I saw in the article was that there was there was the, the, the monkey pox. pox yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So if you show, up. it's tough to have a worse beat than that. And listen, I hope he's okay. I mean, dude, you know, serious stuff. But. Yeah, I mean, the GoFundMe's got to be popping off. That's like just an all timer. Like you can't get all three. <laughs> Wait, of those. did he start one? I don't. Just, I don't know, but oh. I feel like it would. Because he, just, he got the HIV because he took the vaccine. What happened? <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> definitely that's definitely the route we want to go down. But that is yeah, like it, and it's it's tough. Like that's that's a tough break. I don't, I don't know. Like what order do you think the doctor reads those off to you? Because you know you're like, oh, do you want the good news or I the mean, bad the, news? And it's just like, how do you rank that? It's like well, obviously yeah. COVID. He's probably fine already. Mm-hmm. The other two. Well, they're going to well, quarantine well, him for pox, so I think they got to do that first. So, like, hey, you have monkey pox, so we're going to quarantine you for this. You have COVID too, but we wait. For and then when he pox, comes out of that, then they tell him he has is HIV. monkey pox strictly STD or is that airborne? It's STD, right? It, you, I don't know, I don't know enough get, about it. You get you mostly get it as uh, an STD. Okay, mm-hmm. so he doesn't need corn. He just doesn't need to bang anybody. How does HIV work again? Didn't they say it, like I saw Magic Johnson obviously HIV positive, but he he is like in rem, it's never it's always in remission. He beat it or something. Did yeah, he? well like he's alive. Like I he was. Know, the lot of, we need a lot of fact Then you can get AIDS. You can't yes. get AIDS without For, being HIV correct, positive. Correct. Correct. I know AIDS, that. AIDS, AIDS is, is worse disease. than yes. HIV. Yes. Yes. yes, I know that. But I think that you like for the first time ever people are able to go from having AIDS back down to just being HIV positive. Oh, really? I feel like I see on, like, different broadcasts now, like, you know, everything's about pharmaceutical, and, like, you see, like, a lot of them being like, oh, HIV, like, and people are just out there having their happy lives. Like, Magic Johnson, you know, it's like he won a gold medal and, like, won the All-Star game with being HIV positive. I feel like HIV might yeah. be not as bad. Uh, you don't think so? I, I feel like third world countries are still be- or uh, you can't even say that now. Developing world. Or what is it? What's the term? You babe? can just say third world I countries. I don't know. Underdeveloped. Uh, 
this fucking world. What the fuck does the matter with it? It's all the same. Yeah, shit. It's, it's a problem in Africa. I mean, I at think. the end of the day, it's a tough day for this guy. Bad day. I, I wish him a speedy recovery. Um, and yeah, just not, you know, not, not a, certainly men from Italy have had better days than this. So. Do you take this one personal because uh, he's part of the tribe? He's put from the home country. From um, other land. Yeah, he just, you know, he just had a lot of sex in Spain. He's went a little too hard. Is that know. how he got it? I believe yeah. so. Don't quote he me. He went on like a gay research. sex ramp, ramp, rampage. Okay. It wasn't drug related or needle usage or not from what I'm aware. I mean, I'm sure that was uh, like a compliment to his rampage. Maybe. I don't want to, you know accuse the guy of something he didn't do but it sounds like he was kind of fed up with life and is like fuck it i'm gonna go to spain and just bang everything i see and i'm sure drugs were part of that my guess would be drugs were part of that intravenously i don't know yeah who know i don't Probably listen a lot orally. of a lot of alleged a lot of do your own fact checking regardless uh we just we'll know somebody on. had a real tough day yeah someone had a really tough day it's thoughts all and like, prayers like uh, yeah, that's a that's it's like an Arthur that's episode, one of these. right? It's no really good, like, horrible, very bad day. Mm -hmm. Sorry, man, that's a that's a shitty day. That's yes. all you can say to him. It's a shitty day. Day ruined. Not good. His day's ruined. Day ruined. Yep. Uh, next topic here. Uh, By the way, co I mean monkeypox and HIV. COVID's really lingering to the point that it's sticking in that topic. Like monkey, right? Monkeypox and HIV, and be like. The COVID should be a footnote at this point. I, I think HIV is still the worst. But that's like, like insult to injury. Have COVID. They're just throwing fucking COVID on Can you get rid of monkeypox, by I'll the way? Be, I'm actually positive he doesn't have COVID. <laughs> this is the dumbest medical are you conversation positive maybe or are ever you broadcasted on the HIV internet. HIV positive. <laughs> Legitimately the dumbest oh, conversation. Uh, but I think the COVID was like insult to injury. That was my last, my okay. last note. Yeah, just a little extra yes. kick in the nutsack. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, next topic here, Len Dawson, RIP. He died at 87. Uh, iconic photo, smoking a cig, drinking yep. a fresca. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl. Um, Len Dawson is, the, is, the, is a name of, like, that's the name. You say Len Dawson, I'm going back in time. I'm like, I bet this guy was leading drives. Um, Number 16. You know, it's one of those things. I'll, I'll peel back the curtain for a second. The Len Dawson news dropped, and there was some uncertainty as to whether or not, like, how do we – is it authentic if a 35-year-old gets on the Barstool blog and talks about the impact Len Dawson had to the American Football League? Is it authentic if I do that? Like, if Chief sat down and was, like, passionate about Len Dawson, mm -hmm. would anybody really believe him? I would just write an email to my dad. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do a blog. I would just, like, one person needs to know that, and it's my dad, and I would send it to him via email. And he'd say <laughs> something like, uh, yeah, tough son of a gun or something. Something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. gunslinger. I don't know what he would say, but... Yeah, Len Do keep matriculating the ball down the field. That's like an, an NFL th film thing from Hank Stram. That was the quarterback. That's all I know about him. I'm uh, just happy that no one's sitting around being like, Len Dawson couldn't play today's game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen any of that either. But RIP, classic do you, picture. Do you ever get like look at someone smoking a cigarette? Like this, I always say this about Tommy Shelby. Time. And I, I'm like, man, that guy looks so cool smoking a cigarette. I kind of wish I could pull that off. Yep. Don That's Draper. Len yeah, Don Draper. Mm -hmm. I've only seen a few episodes, but yes. Like he just looks so cool, just burning that heater right there. Yeah, like it sucks to die for so, like cigarettes. some people. I'm sure it sucks to die, but um, mm -hmm. I would like, say it's, probably yeah. Yeah, well, but, some, not everybody. Yeah, but like if you're in pain, you know, there's yeah, some people certain circumstances. But it's probably cool knowing that you'll have a photo that literally will live on forever. Him smoking at halftime in a Super Bowl will never go away, unless if like cigarettes just go extinct and nobody gives a fuck about them. But that was know. a special time. It was. I, I, I wish we still lived in an era where athletes could just openly smoke. I feel like Tony Kukoc was oh, like our a, last guy for that. There's a bunch that still do. With baseball players? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yanis Espedis off the top of my head. Um, Jeff Samarja. I know that oh, he likes shark smoking up. heaters in the bullpen's a good visual. He is from <laughs> Northwest Indiana, right? Yeah, he's a region rat. Um, the Oger Samer Despagne. Do you remember him? He's still hanging around, I think. He, he's some fucking loser the White Sox picked up like two, three years ago. Uh, spot starter, hung around for years, is like, oh, we need someone to start today. Call up this asshole. I never saw it personally, but I would always get like DMs and shit from people saying, dude, he's literally smoking in the bullpen before he's warming up right now. This conversation makes me want to I know. I kind of want a heater right now. I, 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 heater I just to wish like Luka Doncic would be like walking out of the arena burning six. Do you say that because he's Eastern European? Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. And bad body. Yeah. Like, but he's he, but still fucking body. sweet. Like he's just oh. sweet. Like he could pull it off. 
But he'd have to be the one of the guys that hold it in between his fingers so it's sticking out like that, not like this. Oh, you think he's smoking the long, slim ones? Just, like a joint. I, kind of as a kid, I always thought that dude smoked like that. And, and then the women smoked like that. Oh, yeah. really? Yes. Like, I was convinced that that was just like it is. It, it is a more feminine way to do it. I think you move it over smoke. as it gets down. Yeah. It's like coming down, then you'll move it back. Yeah, but then like I'll, like a really stressed out dude just put it in between. Like, he, yeah. They mastered that. Uh, next topic here, the Saints trolled the Falcons with signs in their stadium saying that their uh, express escalators were going 28.3 times faster, referencing the 28-3 to 3 choking to the Patriots. Chief, we'll start with you. I... I for me, I don't know. I, I feel like this, it, you could have done this the year after it happened, but like that was like, what, five years ago now? Like, I, I feel like that's just like that joke is just like way outdated and like the Saints haven't won one in a decade plus now either. Like, what are we, what are we talking about? Not even to mention like the Sean Payton era, like it's over. Like you, yeah. like, who are you? Who right. the fuck are you? Yeah, right. that's a good point too. <laughs> you know? yeah. can't do that. Like, right. yeah, like you lost Troop Breeze. Like, it's like. I also. You're in a new era, pal. And this could just be my northern bias, but I don't think of those two teams as rivals at all. It'd be like, it'd be like if the Colts started talking shit about the Bears just because they were like near us. I'd I think like, it's your northern bias. I mean, they're in the same, same, they're in the same they, division. They fucking hate each other. Yeah. Yeah. They hate each other. Like, I think more I than like Charlotte, I don't, more than Charlotte and more than the Bucks. I think those are the two. That's like the two. Teams. Yeah, obviously, Buck Saints is in my head because of Che and Mintz, but like. Yeah, but like, I, I don't. For like 15 years. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah. But like, when I'm thinking of NFL rivalries, it's like Cowboys and, and Eagles and Eagles and Giants and, and Bears Packers. And, you know, like, those are like the rivalries I think of. Yeah, sure. It's not a traditional rivalry. Steelers, as as like Ravens. Go, but that doesn't mean that the fucking, you know. The Saints are pretty crazy, and I don't—not just the fan base. I just think it's like an organization, like it's rooted in their fucking DNA to just be like. Yes, yeah, I agree. Is, I don't hate the Saints, so I'm not like Saints fans. Don't come at me. I I, I love New Orleans, but like, the, Never this is an aggressive fucking joke. And these were the escalators up to the t the very top of the Superdome, right? I think so. Okay, not so aggressive. Not. My understanding is that their upper bowl is supposed to be like. Looney Bin City. Okay. And so if they're like, maybe that's part of their thing. Do they, if this, is this routine? But to your point, yeah. fucking old joke. They don't have skin in that game. If yeah. the Patriots yeah. wanted to, I don't know. That's right. Yeah. But like, I don't it know. Weird. I, it was weird. It, it was, was weird. It was like, you're trying too hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause how much do you think that sign? Unless it, unless if like, it really is like, there's a burning passion for the Falcons that they don't like, or as obviously we have no fucking, we have no leg to stand on versus the Packers right now. Like, that's just a fact. Yeah. But we will always chant, fuck the Packers, you know, whatever chance we get. Right. But that's like a 120-year-old, mm -hmm. like, and they hate us, too. Like, yeah. they have to laugh at us, but they still, they don't like people from Illinois. I don't know. Maybe we're, we have to, maybe we're missing Fibs. something. Uh, next topic here. Uh, California is set to ban the sale of all gas-powered vehicles by 2035. White Sox, Dave. Why don't you take this one? Yeah, Ed? you're fucking, fucking Johnny Tesla. Tesla. I don't be passing this one off to Dave. Well, White, so White Sox. He's Dave. a fossil fuel guy. You're Mr. Electricity. I Want to know what my electricity nope. bill Put it on was him. What this was month? Two hundred fifty-eight dollars. Dang. Man, that AC. I, yeah, AC is cranking. Is it, I bet it's running right full, now. Oh fuck yeah, it is. Well, you got you dogs got to be comfortable. Yeah. yeah, mine's running right now. At too. this point, I think you just subconsciously like the sound of the hum. But I, Ed. I do like it. Ed. Like I keep one. saying, people talk to me about the gas prices and this. I just saw all this coming, so I just decided to get my ducks no, in a row sooner than anybody else. You wanted to say you drive a Tesla. So that's why I did it. This is my initial. This is one of the Socialism even. certainly gives you a foundation to understand economic principles at this time, right? Can we, can we just say that this will never happen? It won't happen, and even if it does happen... If California is the only one doing it and the rest of the world still operating on fossil fuels, they're doing nothing to help. All they're doing is saying, oh, we're doing our part. It's all performative. And you know how much I hate performative activism. And what are they going to do about shipping and trucking? We have shipping, all trucking. Yeah. Are you going to have all these fucking the, every this is what it, yeah. drive in in the world? Well, the sale, the sales, a key word here, guys are not banning them. They're banning the yeah, sale. Yeah, so you're, they're just making it more I'll difficult. Say, I'll say this. So you could still road. drive them there, but like you're not going to be able to buy a 2035. Uh, what about private transactions? Is it? Does it? If I, can I that's fucking good, good, use good car? Point? I doubt it. Sell something to my neighbor? I. I doubt. I'm not going to say what I want to say. No, say it. You have to now. What's you can't wrong, do that. Chief? It's against the rules. Then they better help out people 
who can't afford these higher priced EV cars because they'll be more affordable by that. I though. hope so, but yeah. ma- but if you're ma- if you're it, the, you still have to supply the batteries and get all the raw materials out. And if you're having an entire state, which is I think the eighth largest economy in the world on its own, is forcing everybody so by forty million people by fiat to all drive electric cars, and those guess what? That's a supply and demand thing, and those prices are going to go up. So I think that this is kind of like a shitty thing to do to enforce against people who may not be able to afford that car. You're just going to ban them from being able to drive a car? That's fucked they're up. They're doing it just to say that they're, like, going green they and saving the, saving the fucking planet. got to start somewhere, Dave. It's another chapter. But in you got to get 100% turn Texas blue. buy-in from not it just is. our country, but I, the entire world. Policy that is, like, where you make people do things, I think is an indication that the policy is not any good. So come up with a better policy. I'm on Chief's side. I don't, I don't have How about you entice people to want to buy the electric car more than just forcing it down their throats. People do want to buy them, though. The yeah, I'm not saying they don't. Yeah. The demand is I, through the roof. I would like one. I'd like one. But they I can't don't, keep up. The supply is their problem which right is now. At least problem. Tesla, actually, there's a bunch of other electric cars. Mm-hmm. But uh, and, okay. and it's going to keep growing, and then it'll just be higher prices because that'll it's still going to be in demand. But And 2035 is one of those things where it's like, ah, we'll just push that back. I don't think it'll ever happen, and I don't yeah. think it should happen. Kick the can. Mm-hmm. Uh, last topic here. Uh, week zero starts this week. Uh, Saturday, we, college football I is back. Up. I should have Both been of you boys. Right yeah, you know I'm going. You're going. Okay. I'm going. I'm excited. Is Illinois playing this weekend? Yeah, Wyoming. 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 Oh, it's let's at go. Wyoming. No, fuck that. I was oh gonna God. say. I, I think right. that no disrespect. Is, Wyoming's gorgeous, right? I, Laramie is a little tough, but I do think that that is Cheyenne's m- tough. They're cowboys. I think that that's probably my favorite. Um, like non power five college football uniforms that Wyoming, that brown, the yellow, brown. the white helmet. You like a nice brown in the fall, don't you? I oh yeah. I do. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a it's a unique color scheme and I think it I think it pops on T V. Did you guys see C B S in the music for college football for the Big Ten? I don't want to talk about it. That was a viral clip that was going around last week because now C B S is broadcasting now. Big Ten games. Yeah. Yep. So that you know ca- the that SEC you music too? The SEC music is now applied to Big Ten games. I know. It does. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite parts of fall is hitting the Rhinefield parking lot at 7 in the morning, getting all sorts of hammered, and usually I'll have two tickets. So I'll go back out at halftime to the tailgate, and I'll come back in for the second half with a different ticket, and I'll be even drunker. Then you hightail it to somewhere in the city, and you watch that 2.30 – uh, SEC game like Tennessee versus Bama or whoever. That's great. It's one of my favorite things on earth. I, I mean, cannot. I got Ed. I mean, I got. I was devastated when Vernon Lundquist was off the call. Like I, I just want. No, that's that, that's that's acceptable. And I, but I love that jingle. I love the SEC in that like that. You'll never be like. I'll be sitting in the kitchen or I'll have the TV on if they play that. I'll be like, what game am I watching? I'm like, oh yeah, it's fucking Indiana mm-hmm. against Purdue. And a punt fest like that music. No, they have a responsibility to use that music on the right game. They can't just be throwing that fucking music for that, Indiana Purdue. Right. That that music has to be used for you know in Oxford when Ole Miss plays Alabama. It can't. They have to come up with something new for the Big Ten. That is that is synonymous with SEC football. You cannot use that change. But certainly uh, at the Mad Meter, like that's towards the lower end, right? It's all big one big pile of bullshit it's that I I am so mad about every single aspect of the change going on in college football. It drives me insane. All of it. Yeah. I mean I agree with you on a lot of it, but yeah. round ball rock or You'll CBS jingle. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Uh, NBA theme. Uh, I mean I think the NBA on NBC is still probably yeah. the best. Yeah. That's one. that's yeah. the goat. Yeah. That's the goat. Uh besides that Brian Boytano wrote that. Really? Saban what would Brian Boitano do if he were here today? He wrote round ball rock, Dave. He had a big flowing jerry curl. What's Probably up, Ed? Probably kicking ass or two. Oh, That's you want to talk about Saban? Do. What do you want to say? 11 and 7, or you want to talk about OCPs? You're, you're seeing uh, the second Austin Powers. Yeah, yeah of where course. Where the, the opening intro, he's like battling some woman and she just won't die. The Fembot? The Fembot, No, it's yeah. not the Fembot. It wow. was like they jumped out of a building, they went through glass, they shot her, and it was like a bit where she, they tried to kill her a million different ways and she wouldn't die. It's like the very opening of the movie. That's how I feel about Nick Saban. Why won't you die? Like he is so dominant that there's just no one else can even break through that. And I... I, I saw the pic... It's true, though. I saw the picture of when Brian Kelly got hired at LSU and uh, Nick Saban's like 
seven years older than him or some shit. Did you know that? Yeah, Saban's like, I think, almost 70 now. Yeah. Saban's Brian, older than Belichick. Yeah, by a it's, year. It's insane. He yeah. looks like he's in his 50s. It's all those oatmeal cream pies. Yep. Seriously. It is all those oatmeal Anybody cream pies. Anybody watching Hard Knocks? I, saw, I watched coaching. the first episode. Yeah, I only watched Dan the first. Campbell. Yeah. And I feel validated now watching this because on Redline Radio, we've talked. I'm like, man, I really like Dan Campbell. I feel like I've been saying that for a little bit. Where we bring up the Lions, I'm like, I like this guy, Dan Campbell. And now that you see the way he talks to these players, it like makes me want to go back and not quit the high school football team. Like the love he has for those players. Very interesting series. Oh, well, it is. Um, all right. That's the rundown. Any after show topics? Sorry, we're a little rushed today. Uh, we had a big company meeting that went an hour and a half. Some like Almost an hour and a half, so we have to kind of express this, but we anything. What do you got on the Mincy situation, Ed? It's tough. Tough situation. What do you got? I can't make heads or tails of it. Yeah, I can't What do you mean? Because, like, Mincy's thing where he's like, I, I did call him, but I, I did it to have my bosses back. I, I'm not inclined to think that he's lying on that. Yeah, I don't think Min, I don't. I, I believe I have no reason not to believe Mintz. Is, yeah, you know. Not. I also don't think that. But Dave with certainly all thinks due he is. Respect to Mintz, Portnoy doesn't need Ben Mintz running to his defense. That's just my thought. Or anybody. What really. do you think about that, Carl? Um, like in a private conversation, having spent time with Ben Mintz, I he's just like the purest, nicest man of all time. Like. He is quite literally the nicest person and has, like, the warmest heart and is just the most welcoming person of all time. Yeah. There the is not is. a bad bone in that man's body. And so I can completely understand Ben Mintz being like, well, I'm really – he's probably he's, – Ben Mintz is close friends with so many people. Like, you don't – you're not just, like, friends with Ben Mintz. Like, you're close with Ben Mintz once you get to know him. And so I, I bet he's probably fucking close with this guy from childhood – or from whatever his experience are, warm enough to be like – feeling comfortable enough to insert himself in the situation but yeah probably just about the worst situation you could ever insert what, yourself what, okay, into. okay so if if that is true everything you just said about ben mintz is that is it then on ben mintz to look at this guy stein or steen or whatever his name and be like fuck this guy i don't know if he's capable of doing that unless unless that guy is has wronged ben yeah but Unless that I've guy seen is like a couple of his yeah. videos. Sure, no. If Ben is close with him, though, if Ben has like a close person, I, I can't speak. Show to me ben your friends, name. and I'll show you you. You ever heard that expression? No, I haven't. Okay, you've heard that before. Okay, I mean <laughs> context clues. That's what I mean. Like it, it's, but that, that would be the, the red flag for me. But I, I I'm. He's I, a traveling man. Ben Mintz is a man who's lived across. He's yeah. a, a, he's a guy with a broad network of people. Mm-hmm. I'm just only speaking from what I know about Ben. Mm-hmm. Uh, that said, just. Why would you do that though? I yeah. mean, we yeah, we just and the fact like he said it right. It was it was public, you know. So that guy like so he said it right away. Like yeah, he called me. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> you can make fun of me, Ed. How did Dave find out that he called him? He said it on a show. Stein did. Yes. Oh, yes. But then you told Dave. Yes. Uh huh. So you're some, a, also a rat. Somebody sent it to me. But then someone accused you of being a rat. You didn't like that. Well, I mean, it's just not true. I mean, it's it's quite literally being loyal to the family. And I agree. That's all it is. If it didn't come up yesterday, then it would have come up on the show on Tuesday. Because if it's in the public eye, and that's like what people don't understand, if it's out there, you have to talk about it. Yeah. Like, it's just that that's, that's simple. And you do a show with Dave every week, correct? Correct. And Dave provided this entire company? Correct. So... You should and probably like, be loyal to him instead of a guy you've met a couple times. Yeah, and it's not like – it was just like a situation that's like, hey, dude, check this out. You yep. might want to look under the hood. Yep. Right? Yep. I'm, I'm with you on that for sure. Dave, you with me? 95%. Have yeah. you talked to Mincy since at all? Yeah, I talked to him. I was like, hey, dude, I hope you know it wasn't personal. I was like, I'm, I just – anybody who would have done that, I would have said, Dave, you got to check this out. And uh, make sure it's fine. And he was cool about it. He said, no, I get it. You know, whatever. He's like, I was. I don't even say I don't believe you when you say, mm-hmm. like, uh, it was mm. it was not with ill intent because I, I have no reason not to believe men's. I believe him. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, I mean, if people are trying to bring down Dave and this guy's going to be seemingly a big enemy for him in the future, he should know if there's double agents. So I that's agree. Just it. I agree. Obviously, White Sox Dave doesn't agree 5% no. though. So, I mean, White I Sox, think five percent families here agent. too. White not, Sox Dave. not that anybody would ever say anything shitty in that realm, but um, but yeah, if it's public, you it's public. That's the like, point. Yeah. Like it was yeah. public out there, and people 
that's how this works now when you do this show. People just send me stuff. Like I just mm -hmm. get DMs and I just yep. get things. And it's like, oh, all right, I'll check this out. And when you see that, and the, if did you watch the minute clip? I haven't seen that. It's like, oh, fuck. It's like, all right, he called him before the podcast even aired. You know, it's like, all right, well. Yeah, after he recorded and then. Yes. So it wasn't even like he saw him on there and, like, something happened. So it was like, all right, hey, dude, you sh I don't know. It could be nothing. It's probably nothing. I believe it's nothing, but. Good day to be Brandon yes. Walker. You just just reclaim the entire South. The yeah. new king of the yeah, South. Yeah, especially after the old Miss National Championship. That was a That's a turn. I wonder if Mincy would trade it. I think yeah. you have to vacate that title. Weren't Mintz and Walker going at it like a week ago? I mean, they go at it all the time. But, like, and weren't they actually going yeah, at it? Yeah. yeah, I can see that a little bit. And listen, like, Mintz will be fine. Dave loves him. It's, like, not that serious at the end of the day. It's really not. I know it appears that way from the outside, but it's, it's And really this not. is a... This is part of like Dave's content historically yeah. that he just does. He kills it. Like if he has yeah. an opportunity to go at it with an employer, kind of like, I mean, yeah. Um, last note here: uh, Surviving Barstool airs on Sunday. I'm in it. It's at 7 p.m. Eastern. How many episodes? Uh, I believe it's only gonna be five, like 30 minute episodes or something. So pretty short. That's what nice it was for us, watch. I believe. Yeah. Monday through Friday, Sunday through Thursday, maybe. Uh -huh. I think that's what it was for us. Yeah. So go check it out. First episode, there's some fireworks. Some, f some legit I, fireworks. What it, we we had to interview Fitz, but I got a text from uh, Logan at like, I don't know, it might have been like three or five. It was sometime, and he's like, "Hey, can you get on a flight and be in New York tonight?" It was like the afternoon. I'm like, "No, dude, I got to fucking interview Pat Fitzgerald tomorrow morning." So sorry. Like, you could have given me a week heads up or three or four days heads up, not a few hours heads up. Yeah. So next time. You want to call Logan out right now? Yeah. No. I, I will I like say Logan. we just Logan's had awesome. a big company meeting where Dave Portnoy specifically said, don't say no. It's bad. We just, like, that was a private thing that he made a big Dead. point about not saying no. <laughs> and while I think your situation is reasonable, not information you need to volunteer mm. immediately after that meeting. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, it sucks at a game. But I wouldn't have said no to, like, being, I, I would have just, like, been in a cameo for the after yeah. show or Where something. Where are the White Sox at today? Uh, five, Baltimore still. Five games back. Oh, in the standings? Four, I think. I don't know. I, I'm apathetic now. Okay. And uh, congrats to John Rich on winning the uh, music album cover draft. That's it. All right. Thanks, everybody, for uh, watching. Uh, we'll be back next Wednesday, I believe. Mm -hmm. And the run will be back on Monday. See you guys on.